The Green Bay Packers more active in free agency this year than I've seen in a long time, going for two of the biggest names of the entire free agent class, if you will, in Josh Jacobs, who was one of the best running backs in the league a year ago, and Xavier McKinney, debatably the best safety out of the group, just because of the youth. Obviously, you have Simmons, who uh, is maybe the better player right now, but he's 30 years old. He's not 26. You know, he's he's a bit older than that, and uh, you're not going to get him for as long. And uh, both contracts, somewhat up there, right? A four-year uh, 48 for Jacobs and a four-year 68 for McKinney. But McKinney's contract is kind of front-loaded, which will allow Green Bay to try and get Jordan Love for the future. As of right now, I believe Jordan Love's like 21, 22 mil uh, for this upcoming season. Uh, but Jacobs, I think that's good money. Obviously, the running back market, there's so many right now. This is probably one of the best free agent uh, running back markets I've seen in a while, like guys like Swift, Saquon, Aaron Jones soon enough, maybe, well, not even maybe, but very likely uh, on a new team by the time this video comes out. Obviously, Jacobs, and there's a couple of other backs I'm probably forgetting about. Gibson, who's decent, and Singletary, who had a pretty good year. Uh, but yeah, the big thing is obviously losing Aaron Jones to get to this point. Obviously, Aaron Jones, nearing 30, a very, very good player for Green Bay, very versatile, obviously, in that receiving game, and a pretty damn cool dude. He just seems like the kind of guy you want to be around, right? And obviously, that's a big part of the reason why Green Bay wanted to keep him all these years, not just because he's really good, but also, he's just a Packer, right? He's just simply a Packer, um, but unfortunately, he is no longer a Packer, technically. Teams I'd like to see him on, like to see him on the Chargers. I feel like he's like a great Eckler replacement, but I could easily see him go to the Jets, obviously for the Rodgers connection, and then I could obviously see him go to the Cowboys as, uh, well, it's like a hometown thing, and he always plays well in Dallas, and they obviously kind of need a running back right now, but yeah, those are the kind of teams, but as of right now, looking at this team, David Bakhtiari also released, Devondre Campbell released, uh, Savage, they didn't go for him. Some moves, but as far as what you expected nothing really surprising kind of Campbell a little bit definitely did not have a great year and kind of after that first year in Green Bay just trending downwards and you know some injuries and then David Bakhtiari I mean you're talking about injuries that's that's the pinnacle of injuries it's really unfortunate because honestly you know some people might not really know how good David Bakhtiari truly was but if he didn't get injured you know we're talking about a clear cut like clear cut First ballot Hall of Famer, one of the best tackles ever. That's how good he really was. What, three all pros in his short, you know, career, if you will? Can't really call it short because technically he has a lot of years on the under the belt, but you know, didn't really play for the last three years, if you want to count it, three and a half ish years. Uh, but a really good player when healthy. And of course, he's supposedly healthy coming into next year. Maybe he'll be a jet as well, just to join the Packers, because obviously or no the Jet the Jets because of the Packers thing where all Packers players must go to the Jets now that Rodgers is there. But, uh, yeah, Rasheed Walker, he had a really good year last year, especially in the second half of the season, one of the best tackles in the league based on the second half of the season. Zach Tom had a really good year. Uh, Josh Myers, not going for Creed Humphrey, has been always the biggest head-scratcher of, like, anyone, let alone Packers fans. But overall, Goody kind of has gotten it right more than gotten it wrong, so we allow these mistakes. Uh, Ellen Jenkins, obviously. He's a great player and uh, now easily the best lineman on this team. Uh, going forward, though, you don't really need to worry about the offense too much. You need a new guard because, you know, I don't want Sean Ryan playing there. He really hasn't shown much. But outside of that, you know, maybe you get a center replacement because Meyer's also on a contract year, I believe. But the O-line's not in a bad spot at all. It might be in a bad spot in Madden, right? We're probably going to have to replace Rasheed Walker because... Madden is just stupid, okay? What can I tell you? He's a great player, and EA just doesn't know that. Uh, but tight end, you don't need to replace anyone. Wide receivers, Dante Vion Wicks, one of the best uh, separators in man coverage in the entire league, against man coverage, I should say, in the entire league. And that's something Green Bay hasn't had for a long time. You know, it's, De well, Devontae Adams. But outside of Devontae Adams, they just struggle to get against, uh, you know, get release against man but Dontavian Wicks, there's something there. Dobbs, when healthy, seems to be a true number one. Reed, he's a freak. Insane in the slot and uh, the trickery kind of end around plays. A lot of bright future on this team. It's crazy to think when you look at this four, Christian Watson's the worst one of them all. Like, I don't know what they're going to do with him. 
if they would have got that trade of Christian Watson and whatever draft pick they were trying to do for Jonathan Taylor or the Colts were trying to do, man, it would have been a move. The fact that the Colts wanted that and the Packers didn't, oh, they were so close to cooking, cooking. They would have cooked beyond belief, but unfortunately, Green Bay stuck with Christian Watson now who, hey, if he can fix that hamstring, which it just seems like, you know, there's some players that just never, ever get away from their hamstring issues, he could be an amazing flyer. But right now, it's not looking like a good draft pick, unfortunately. And then obviously, you talk about Josh Jacobs, who is, you know, we talked about it a year ago, one of the best running backs in the league. I think he's going to bounce back very strong. And he's not the worst player in the receiving game. I don't know if he's quite an Aaron Jones type, but he is a problem in the receiving game. So don't sleep on him. Otherwise, you're going to be giving something up deep. And then looking at the defense, obviously, Xavier McKinney, uh, the best graded coverage safety that Green Bay has had since... I don't even know. I I can't know. I don't know the exact numbers, but I'd like I say want to say since Nick Collins. It's crazy to think, but that that's kind of what I want to think. Um, Preston Smith, valuable, you know, viable outside linebacker, constantly getting restructured because they don't want to deal with the dead hit. Van S. It's still really early. You know, it's just like a Rashawn Gary type where you don't know how long it's going to take for him to develop, but he has those uh, athleticism ratings. Quay Walker did have a better season this year, but still far from perfect. Need a new inside linebacker to go with him. Uh, Devontae Wyatt stepped up last season. Slayton looks pretty good. Carl Brooks, there could be something there. Kenny Clark, super inconsistent, but just never has consistent help. And then cornerbacks, Jair obviously was a little injured, and Stokes has been a lot injured. So definitely need a new corner. Could use some new interior guys, especially for Madden's concerns. Middle linebacker for sure. Safety, strong safety for sure. A couple of offensive linemen, and we're hoping the wide receivers work out, but I'm not 100% sure. Real life, a lot less than that, but in-game, the way they're rated because of the ages, I think they might need a little bit more. But now that the Yap Fest is over, I'm not actually sure what uh, Green Bay's actual number is, but I fell for the um, the dead hits that they had in real life. So the Jones, the David Bakhtiari, so David was like 20, Jones is like... I think eight. Devondre is like 11, but it's split between two years, of course. Uh, so I should have the realistic numbers here. I also traded the proper players that need to be where they are. I put, uh, I think some of them might not be, but I put the main ones that needed to go where they needed to go. Like Awuzie, that's not that big of a deal, right? He's 29 years old. He's star dev. It doesn't really matter. Same with Van Ginkle. Uh, but I obviously moved Gabe Davis to the, the Jaguars. I moved Swift to the Bears, Saquon to the Eagles. Those types of moves I made, but some of the ones that are a little bit on the older side, you know, it doesn't really matter as much. I also brought back Rudy Ford on a one-year four. I'm not sure if he's already gone to another team or they re-signed him for cheaper, longer, or more expensive, whatever. But that is my move, and I have my players scouted. And I'm not exactly sure what I want to go in the first round. I think Green Bay really needs to go secondary, even after McKinney. I think cornerback is just too big of an issue, and they definitely need a safety, but... It seems like the safety class is kind of weak, and uh, at best, I'd be willing to go high third for them. So we'll see what happens. Definitely want a running back as well, though. So uh, I know we got Jacobs, but I'm not sure who Green Bay even has on the, the roster outside of Jacobs right now, which I can't even complain. Obviously, Jones I would love to keep, but Dylan, unfortunately, he's just he's just not him. You know, for how big he was, he did not gain that extra yardage that he needed to so many times, tripping over his own feet right at the handoff. And then the rest, Taylor, and I mean, it's just, they really don't have many NFL-level running backs outside of Jacobs. Uh, so, I mean, I think Green Bay definitely needs a cornerback. Uh, I would probably want, like, Wiggins, and I know a lot of Packers fans, and it almost seems like kind of like another Wicks Part 2 situation where it felt like Wicks was always going to be a Packer. DeGene, maybe, Packer as well. Uh, McKintree's not bad, but this team definitely needs a cornerback. I mean, maybe Stokes makes the comeback, and... He's really good, but we just can't bet on him right now. We just can't. Uh, a lot of cornerbacks on my list here. A couple of safeties, a couple of uh, of linemen. Don't know how I feel about the linemen, but uh, we're definitely going to go safety. Probably go corner. And linebacker's pretty weak, too. I think Trevin Wallace might be able to play both. Bit better of a pass rusher, but I think he can play uh, coverage as well. But maybe not as an inside linebacker, but we'll see. Uh, DT could definitely be a help, especially in Madden. In real life, I think Green Bay can can chill on the interior if someone's there they like maybe but it's not a need but in game here and uh, for this rebuild we're definitely gonna have to go with uh somebody uh on the front on the front four for sure on the interior so 
We'll see what happens there. Some running backs as well. I think Green Bay absolutely needs to get somebody with a little bit of speed. All right, sitting at pick 25, Chicago, number one overall. They're going to go QB, and it's been Neighbors. It is Neighbors, right? Nabbers would be two Bs. I don't freaking know. We're going to try to go to around 20 because that's when I think some of the cornerbacks are going to start to go. Could you imagine the top three doesn't have a quarterback? Could you imagine? Because that's what EA is saying. EA is saying quarterback? Nah, dude. Nah, dude, because I imagine this is a Bengals updated class. Could you imagine the Falcons get Caleb Williams with Kirk Cousins, Bowers to the freaking Bears? Um, but, yeah, this is Bengals updated class, and I'm pretty sure the uh, quarterbacks are still pretty good. They look good to me. There's a bunch of A's. Uh, I'm not really sure how this is going to go for us, but a bunch of linemen going early. I, I would imagine helps our case at cornerback. As far as Green Bay going O-line, like I said, they have a, maybe two spots they need to fill. They're... Dejean goes a bit earlier than I thought he would. Oh, no. Um, but, yeah. So, we have Mitchell still there. Wiggins. I don't know if they're going to pass on Mitchell. I would absolutely much rather have Wiggins over Mitchell here. I like that speed. McKinstry. I mean, I think... I'm not really sure what I'd do here. Let's see Mitchell. B, man, C zone. I don't like that. I like the athleticism, but I don't like the, the freaking C zone. Hopefully Mitchell goes before anyone else, though. But uh, I would be willing to trade up. But like I was saying, Green Bay usually doesn't go first round for their offensive lineman unless it's a tackle. And, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, maybe we're fine. And uh, I don't think Green Bay really needs a tackle. Yeah, you can move Tom inside, but I think Green Bay likes the tackle situation as is. And this shouldn't cost us too much more than a fourth, right? It's only four spots. It's pretty close. Let's see what we can do. We can't give him any players. I really don't want to give up a six, but I probably will have to. Ugh, six this. Six next. Looks like it's what it's going to be. Oh, no. And they're too broke to take anything else. Why is this doing this? Like, why are they Why are they being the way they are? I guess we just do a fifth next and maybe like a seventh this. But I need this trade up. I do not want to lose Wiggins. Oh, my. We're really doing this, huh? We're really doing this, Miami. They're like, well, tell the Raiders to give back Wilkins. We'll play more fairly. You know, there's a lot of different quantity of draft picks. Oh, this is no bull crap. Why am I giving up so much? The look! Holy, I, I don't even know if I like that. <laughs> but we move up four spots. We're going to get our cornerback, and we're going to be happy about it. Nate Wiggins is going to be the choice. Uh, very athletic, 21 years old. Look at Ash speed. Nate Wiggins, 97 speed, and uh, that is a move. That is a move. Uh, there might be some other players that we want up here, but I'm not even gonna, not even gonna give them a second thought because we really cannot trade up. If anything, probably looking at a trade down at this point. Let's see what the DT spot looks like. Safeties, uh, maybe go with like Bishop, high third or late second, something like that. Linebacker, I think it's just it's kind of a barren wasteland. Sweat, Green Bay could use like a proper nose tackle. Kenny Clark, I mean, you could probably move him around a little bit. Sweat, someone as good as him with that size. Green Bay needs some run D. Do you, tra do you take Sweat here? Like, I can't imagine he'd be there much longer, but if I take Sweat here, I think that kills running back, no? Can maybe go with Wright or Irvin in the third? Oh, no. I like, I like sweat. I like a good sweat. And there's really no one else that can, like, compare to him. I'm going to take Tavondre Sweat, I think. I like the size. Hindev, 97 strength. Give yourself a proper nose tackle in there. And then a 25. I don't know, dude, because what is our third round situation looking like? 25 in the third. We need O-line. We could use a safety badly, and then I really want running back. It probably doesn't matter in a Madden sense to get running back, but as far as like trying to keep this as realistic as possible, I think a quorum would be nice for Green Bay to get their Aaron Jones back. I mean, this would be kind of fun. I mean, I don't know. I think we can wait a little bit. I'm going to try to get to like the 5th or the 10th spot in the 3rd round and see what we can do. I was just testing the waters. I didn't really think this was going to go. Did I make a mistake? I traded for 71 and pick 100. It says they were given an offer of five points higher. I don't know. Maybe they just really wanted that trade. They get Jenkins, who I think has pretty good ratings, but I think he's normal. Um, 
Don't know what's here, but once again, we just traded down. I can't really afford to trade back up. So far, I'm not hating this draft if Green Bay can land this in real life. And I felt like we traded a lot to move up those four spots, so it would not surprise me if that is very doable. Uh, pick 25, and I think another third round, if I'm not mistaken. So three third round picks here. Cornerback is gone. We got safety. Bullard could be like a really good value pick. Uh, what do we have? at linebacker, not really looking great. Wallace, maybe. Uh, O-line. Running back is still there. Trey Benson. I think he's projected late second, early third, right? But I'm going to take Trey Benson. I think Trey Benson's probably the guy that most people see as the number one. So I don't know if he even lasts this long, but I'm taking him. Trey Benson's our running back, too. Unbelievable speed. And maybe that brief moment where Green Bay had the best running back group is back? Question mark? All right, I'm trading up a few spots, about seven. I gave them two years from now, fourth round pick, uh, them being the Bengals. Maybe it's an overtrade, but I really don't have much more. Next year, I don't have any fifths, uh, I sixths or sevenths. This year, don't have any fifths or sevenths, I believe. So we're going to be making this trade up to actually grab Javon Bullard, the free safety, who uh, is actually not as fast as I thought. But I think with Bishop gone, I think he's going to be the best option, right? Tyke Smith. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go with Bullard. Bullard's my guy. Where the hell did this come from? We're not doing this whole Green Bay grabs a cornerback to play safety, to grab a safety to play corner. Javon Bullard's my guy and our first normal dev, but he's a starter at 21. I don't mind. Uh, and then with the next pick, don't know what linemen are looking like, but uh, we're going to see in a moment. I'm not going to trade up anymore because I just can't really afford it. We also have a high fourth round pick, which is nice. And with this, we do have some more safeties. Cedric Gray could be an option for the linebacker spot that we've been worried about. And O-line, there are some names. I have no idea who's good, though. Uh, I think we're going to go with Cedric Gray. I think I had him before. He was normal dev. He was okay developing. I'm going to take Cedric Gray. Another tall guy with some athleticism. Some moldable pieces. And then I don't know what the O-line situation is like, but if I can trade this down for two high fifths, that would be great. I don't know about high fifths, but we trade a six two years from now with that fourth this year to grab two fifths and a six. One of the fifths is high-ish, but uh, the rest is kind of low. So we're going to move all the way to pick one in the fifth round. Maybe use that six we just got to move up to this spot. Don't know if that's really going to happen, but we could use some linemen. A DT wouldn't hurt either. Sorry if, you know, we take some players here that are, like, projected to go a lot higher than they actually did. But uh, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. I'm going to go with... Joshua Gray, normal dev. I expect all of them to be normal dev, but I'm also going to, I think, trade. Uh, you know what? We got our guard. If we get anyone else, that's just icing on the cake at this point. And Keegan's there. I mean, I'll take all the linemen I can get. Trevor Keegan, also normal dev, but stronger, so might be the starter. Hell, they might both start. I don't know what their overalls are, but it doesn't take much to be higher than Josh Myers, especially with his age. He at least have a higher you know, ceiling with these youthful players. This is a really long draft, though. We had so many draft picks. Green Bay does have a lot of draft picks, a lot of high ones as well. Uh, I don't know who is when and where they are. I'm going to try to look. Just, I want to try to keep it as realistic as possible. We'll go with Smith, who I know is a pretty fast player. And uh, he's normal dev, 23. But we get uh, a little bit of speed when I talked about, you know, you never know. Maybe Christian Watson gets traded. And then we're going to go with uh, Dante Corleone. I um, never go with him. Uh, you know, I see him a lot, and he looks okay. I think we went with him once. He never developed. But we got a little bit of depth. We got a lot of players that we needed. We, uh, you know, top-heavy-wise, landed a lot of hiddens. Cost us a little bit for the future, but nothing too much. And uh, overall, I think this team is actually really strong right now. Sure, Trey Benson might not be a Madden need, but Green Bay still needs a, another running back. They needed one with Aaron Jones is around, and now with Joan, with Jacobs around, who is a little less vert versatile as Jones. They definitely could use some uh, some depth there. Uh, but Wiggins at one, I loved that. Or in the first, Sweat, great. Benson, great value. Bullard, great value. Gray, maybe a little high. Uh, another gray in the fifth round. It is what it is. You know, there's some raw picks here, but there's also some, you know, long-term starters, it seems. I think that's the perfect draft. I think this is how Green Bay needs to attack it. Uh, you know, maybe the little high for running back. You might be able to see some running backs fall, but uh, you get yourself such a speedster. I think it's worth it. Let me know what you guys think. I think this is a good draft. But here's the roster for year one, the offense. There are skill positions, but once again, 
I don't know what it's going to look like in Madden. I think in real life, you have a great unit of Dobbs, Reed, and Wicks. And then if Watson's healthy, maybe the best four wide receiver group in the league. Uh, tight ends, there's a lot of potential there with Musgrave and Kraft. Uh, and then obviously Jordan Love played really well last season. So I don't know, see why he wouldn't do it again with a really good running back as well. I mean, Jones was gone for a lot of the season last year. So if Jacob stays healthy and then you have Trey Benson, things are going to cook. The only problem is O-line. We need a new right guard. We probably need a new, not even probably, we need a new center. And then we might need a new left tackle, but everything else I think is pretty fine. And then defensively, this is probably a team that's going to run a 4-3 in real life. But I think right now, as it stands, we're probably built better for a 3-4. So uh, with Sweat being added as the nose tackle, I think uh, this is the scheme we're going to be running. All right, Jordan Lava, a five-year 210. 42 per. I mean, that sounds about right, to be honest. So we're going to be giving that contract. That's, that's about right, I think. Maybe even a little bit more than that. Kind of crazy to think. But Kenny Clark, what even is his ratings right now? 84 overall is is just good enough. But his power move is a little iffy. His block shed's decent. I think that power move is really harsh to be that low. I think this is like a tag situation at best. Stokes, it's not bad for number three, so I guess I actually will keep him. Although, eh, maybe I shouldn't have done that because we have Carrington Valentine. Eh, whatever. Uh, and then looking at everyone else, I don't think we're going to pay anyone else. Even Quay Walker, I'll just re-sign rather than do the fifth-year option. So, Kenny Clark is going to be maybe a tag or just let go type of candidate, but we actually have money. I like it. Where are these breakouts when I'm playing an actual franchise? Three breakouts in one week. Oh, and Lucas, I was about to say, we're probably not going to get them all, but that is a massive one. <laughs> Anytime I'm in the uh, the showers and, uh, you know, I pull my pants down and they're looking at a dingleberry, not my weenie. Uh, but yeah, I didn't think we were going to get these, but you never know. We did win. Could get Jordan Love. Could That would be pretty big for us. Please? Nah. What is happening with these youthful players getting dev ups? Nate Wiggins is now a superstar. We just drafted him. I think win or lose, we should be in the playoffs. And, ooh, almost lost the division there. But won the division at 10 and 7. Let's take a look at our season numbers. Not the best start. And then kind of picked it up a little bit. Some losses here or there. But for the most part, obviously won more than we lost. Let's take a look at the stats and awards. See if we got ourselves a decent Jordan Love season. Uh, did rock the Packers, of course. Is that Josh Jacobs? I think I, I think I just saw Josh Jacobs. Really good season for Love. 33 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 41-55 for yards. And Josh Jacobs, 5 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns, 1,700 total yards. Dobbs, great yardage. Reed, great yards and touchdowns. Wicks, Musgrave. I guess Musgrave, not too bad. But Wicks and uh, Watson, not the best. But there's only so many people you can pass to. Blocking, no one in the double digits. That's a win in Madden. Huh? 1,261 downs played. Good enough to get to Superstar Dev. Had zero sacks. I don't know why EA refuses to make the 3-4 defense put up any sort of numbers, but they just do. 6.5 for Gary, 5 for Sweat, who's probably not even supposed to be anywhere decent at pass rushing. Wow. The, with those numbers, I don't know how we made the, uh, the playoffs. Carlson missed 7 of 19. He's got to go. I was going to give him one more chance. You know, rookie year, it's it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, he's done. We're, we're going for a new kicker. Uh, might even go for a new kicker right now. Uh, MVP goes to Dak. Uh, let's take a look if we won anything. No for offensive rookie of the year. And then defensive rookie of the year. So the Vikings got both awards, unfortunately. Jordan Love at four. Jacobs at three. Aaron Jones went to the Cardinals, apparently. I could see it. Uh, wide receiver at four. O-line at five. Uh, D-line, not on the list. No one surprised at all. No one at linebacker, no one at DB, and uh, kicker, I'm sure of it. But speaking of Aaron Jones and the Cardinals, here they are. We are 82 overall. They are 80 overall, and uh, I don't know how the hell they're here, to be honest. They need so much work. 7-6, 14-6, 23. Oh, my Lord, the numbers. 23-6, defense is cooking, but more or less probably just the Cardinals not being able to put anything up. But not a bad season to, to start. Season one, we got a playoff win. Jordan Love was not great in this one. I know he threw a pick. Yeah, that was that was pretty mid. But Jacobs carrying 
with a bunch of yards, a big run for a touchdown. It seems Rashawn Gary with a sack, Quay Walker and Ford with a, a sack combined. Clark and Van Ness. Hey, Van Ness, half a sack. That was more than his entire season. Love it. Both rookies having a pick for both sides. And we are moving on to the divisional round. Geez, Salat is a crazy upgrade. One to awareness, but four to man coverage. He is really good. But here it is, the divisional round. Anyone but the Cowboys. Oh, I said anyone, but Philadelphia, huh? Okay. Eagles do have a bit of a team. 7-0, 77. 14 to 4, uh, 7, not 77, by the way. 21 to 14. Man, the Eagles are cooking. 21 all. And there goes the lead again. This is a back and forth of the ages. We just can't seem to catch up. We're always a touchdown down. Did we get a stop? We finally got a stop at the perfect time. Driving down on third and nine. Is this a field goal? Oh, no way. It's going to come down to Tucker. Nope, they're going to punt it. Is it not doable for a kick? What is this? Like 54 yards. I mean, it is in under, so I mean. But here, uh, you know, I'll just help out. You know, I'll just I'll just help out. We'll see if we can hit it. Oh my, what an experiment. We learned about kicking today, folks. Defense. Defense. And the defense does it. The Eagles took too long to score. Ran out of timeouts, I think. And no, they didn't. We win. Yay. What a back and forth battle. One of the greatest games ever in playoff history, apparently. Nine total touchdowns, 700 yards. Uh, rushing, just, nobody cared. No one wanted to run the ball. Dobbs was pretty good. Reed was pretty good. Smith and Brown were pretty good. And then all the touchdowns came from the non-starters, if you will. Keon Coleman, that is an interesting name drop there. Uh, sack totals, uh, sweat. Interception totals, nobody. I don't want to speak too soon because we could have the Cowboys here, but uh, I got to say, this is a season. And we have the Cowboys. They went 17-0. So EA is telling me right now that I have to beat a lossless Cowboys team in Sim. I'm sure this will go well for us. I project it to. It's just the way things go. I expect it. But Miami beats the freaking Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, wow. I mean, if it wasn't for Dallas being here, I'd feel pretty good about our chances. We've got the stop and the touchdown. Something about this offense that can't score. Uh, a turnover really just, I mean, there's a chance there to really put up a lead, and instead we're down by 9, down by, what is that, 17? Wow, I just had to say something about the offense, right? Seven points. They scored zero points after I said that. Oh, my Lord, the Cowboys and uh, Tony Pollard's here. I forgot to remove him. Not that it really matters. Tony Pollard's really bad in Sim usually. Uh, that really sucks. I completely forgot about Pollard. So many running backs. I even forgot about Pollard when I was mentioning how good of a running back free agency class it's been in my, uh, reaction video. I don't know why. Tony Pollard just escaped me. I think I've just, like, thought about him in Sim about just, like, not being good and just forgot that he's, he's one of the top names. Uh, but ultimately we had to play against an undefeated team and thus ending our season. Cowboys versus the Dolphins. I mean, if the Cowboys don't win, I'd be shocked. And the Cowboys are now the greatest team in NFL history. Way to go, EA. You have really done it. If I've done yourselves. Any dev ups? I thought there was a chance of Jordan Love going up, and he did. Dobbs didn't. Reed didn't, though. But Jordan Love going to Superstar after a big contract is definitely nice. 84 overall now, which is great. Uh, Jacobs doesn't go up in dev, even though he probably should have. Then defensively, any dev ups? Uh, I don't think so. Not even Bullard went up in dev. That kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, we kind of know we need to replace more on the interior. Another linebacker wouldn't hurt. Safety, we'll see. I want to give Bullard a little bit more time. And then obviously O-line. Wide receiver, I don't know what to think. Watson, can we trade him off for like a fourth round pick at best? Kind of a, not a season where he was injured, but just a season where we didn't play him much. Uh, so might try to trade him off if I can for something. Maybe give him to the Chiefs or something for a uh, fourth-round pick. They'd love him. Uh, but, yeah, let's uh, do our re-signings, which we do have Kenny Clark on the list. I tried to give him a one-year 23. He said no. Let's see what the tag looks like. We might end up having him move on from him, which star dev at 29, 84 overall, 85, whatever he was. I've lost worse, all right? I've lost worse. Uh, I mean, and now it's saying what I was offering is fair. He still says no. What's the contract? Probably 26? 27. Well, see you later. Two free agency. 84 mil. A couple of needs, but we're actually in a pretty good spot right now. A lot of youth on this team. 
Uh, Lawrence would be cool, but we're not in a 4-3 right now. Joke would be cool, but that's just not a need. Cornerback is not a need. Kenny Clark, but a lot of teams want him. Uh, safety, we've been thinking about. DT, kind of. Uh, do we go with Grover Stewart? I don't know if he signed any, like, longer-term contract with the Colts or anything like that, but we could use a new run stopper, I suppose. 87 block shed. I think I'm going to go for him. I think he's our cheaper Kenny Clark replacement. A little bit lower of an overall, but similar in ratings that matter, like block shedding. So I don't hate that. And I think realistically, we probably don't need anything else from free agency because the class isn't the strongest. Who is that 25-year-old wide receiver? Don't need that, really. Yeah, I think uh, that's fine. We're just probably going to have to take O-line, or not O-line, but defense high again like Green Bay does all the time in real life. But yeah, I can live with what we need. All the needs we have, we can get through the draft. Let's see if we get Stewart. Hopefully no one takes him. They don't. One year, about 16 mil or so. 16.5. That's fine. He's an 83 overall. He's a good player. Maybe more of a nose tackle, but eh, whatever. Who cares? Pick one belongs to the Panthers. Which you're going to be using on a pass rusher. Just lost, uh... Brian Burns, so it does kind of make sense. We now have pick 29. Green Bay Packers losing Rodgers, but keeping up with the tradition of losing in the championship round. What is going on with these corners? Hello? I got to look at Childress after this. Are these like the goaded corners of all goats? I love Wiggins, so I'm not going to regret a thing, but it also does suck that you have talent like that sitting there despite the fact that, well, we, you know, just grabbed a cornerback. Um, but... Yeah, looking at what we could be taking. A lot of two to threes, a lot of three to fours, but defensive tackle is definitely up there. And Kerry Smith with a bunch of Bs with an A looks very good, and I think I can't pass. Kerry Smith, I hate it here. It is a defensive tackle, so it's not the hardest position to get a dev up for, but man, it still kind of sucks. Moving on now to 29 in the second. Don't really have that kind of value to be trading up. So uh, there's really no point in even waiting around. Uh, we got a bunch of O-line. We got a tight end. Oh, Hartwell. This guy did look pretty good. He's pretty athletic. He's got a bunch of different uh, good ratings like B-deep, B-spec, A-catch, C-release, you know. He's not bad. I don't think wide receiver is that big of a need just yet, though. Uh, and with this pick, I'd like to go O-line, but there is so many. I try to get to, like, pick 10 in the third instead. Maybe use that to get a fourth round pick, and then I could use, like, two fourths if I have them to get into the third middle. We get two linemen and maybe one linebacker, something like that. That's my plan, at least. I don't know if it's going to work. It was going to be about a 2-7, so I ended up putting Samore Toure in instead to get that fourth round pick. We moved back 13 spots with the Colts uh, to get a fourth round pick. They go with a safety, and we now move on to pick... 10 in the third round likely going to be an offensive lineman but if there's some like uh you know safety or not safety type but linebacker type that looks a little bit better like best does look pretty good uh i don't think i'm gonna go with him though i might go with cohen a little bit of versatility there i do like that a impact block from waters though cohen usually the guys with both like with b in both pass block and run block are just lies though something tells me joey waters 22, how old is Cohen? If Cohen's 21, I'll go with Cohen. They're both 22. Eh, Wisconsin lineman as well. I'm going to go with Cohen. Screw it. Thank you. I need the hiddens. I'm also kind of thinking about Rutherford because he looks really good too. Like, I can live with the linebackers we have. Green Bay has been rocking, like, bad linebackers for, like, the longest time. You know, maybe, like, last couple of years, maybe not so much. But before the last couple of years, for sure. Rutherford could be him. The Bears, they're not going to trade with us, though. It's like a bitter rivalry. Watch them take them. They do not. So we're going to go with the Giants here. I'd like to keep thir uh, 29 to get an offensive lineman again. So uh, I'm going to try and use those two-fourths to get here. But I don't think it's going to happen. Two-fourths this and a fifth next year to move up to that Giants spot, which... I think it's fine. The question is, at 29, will we be able to grab that lineman? Probably not. Uh, but I could live with the lineman we have, so if it comes down to linebacker or lineman, I'll let it happen. But Grant Rutherford, I think the value is there. So, 22 years old, 6'1", 300 pounds, and he's hidden, Dev. I mean, he's probably going to sit for a year, but... Oh, man, the DT we took before actually was normal. Ooh, I don't know. I actually don't know what I'm going to do now. And I'm not going to trade up again, so I'm going to go to 29, and if... 
None of the third or fourth rounders are there. I'm going to trade down for one of the other linemen. You know, we have two linemen, so I can probably... Oh, we do have a linebacker. Pierre Hurts. Hope he feels better. Do I just take Hurts or do I take the lineman? Ronnie Thomas, 21 years old. I'm going to take him. Yes! We're done. We're done with O-line. Well, actually, we could use a left tackle, but we're done with that and uh, call it a great draft. We're back down to just the first through fourth rounds, though, next year as well, which Green Bay, this is like the most unrealistic part of this rebuild is just Green Bay not have any picks after the fourth round. Like, who the hell is... Who the hell is doing that for Green Bay? Like, no one. But you know what? We're landing some really good players, so I am not going to complain. Let's see what these overalls are. Oh, in fairness, the DT might be normal, but he is 77 overall. It's a misleading 77 overall because the tackle, play, rec, and strength is really high, but he is a good player. Very good pursuit as well. He's a good player. He just needs a dev up, but I do have to say he's one of those weird players where his overall is kind of higher than his actual, like, ratings that matter are and I don't know if you start this guy over Stewart who we just got but at the same time do you waste Stewart I don't know uh we need a center not a not a left guard so I suppose we move Thomas to center actually no he was 6'5 the other guy was 6'4 either way we landed some goons the goon squad there we go two hidden linemen if instead of what's the dev Instead of the DT, I would have taken someone else. Like, I would have traded down hard, got a linebacker. Oh, that would have been goaded. But we did get a hidden dev DT anyways, Rutherford, who has 75 finesse, 73 block shed, 89 strength. He's already hidden, so I don't think I'm going to start him. I think I'm going to start the other guy, and we need a left end, right? I think we're going to start the other guy, to be honest. And I do want to see that cornerback, what was his name, Childress? Because I don't know how he's there still. I guarantee he's going to be good. Walker is a 79 overall. McKinley was a 78. Childress was a 77. Nobody wanted corners. Everyone's good at corner, I guess. Because these players are great. Look at the... I mean, I don't know. And we're going to be trading Christian Watson in a fifth next year to the Panthers for a third round pick. I think he like becomes their number one wide receiver. No, number two, because I forgot they got uh, Hopkins. But number two wide receiver right out the gate. They basically get a younger DJ Chark back. Here is the squad for year two. We're really praying Musgrave can get a dev up somehow. But I don't think in this scheme he will. And then wide receivers, we're hoping that happens too. Is 81-81. I think that's 25 and 24 for years old. Definitely up there. 13,000 XP per upgrade. That's why when people ask me, why do you care so much about the age? That's why. You know, if they're really young and they're good, you know, they got a lot more of a ceiling. Wait, is Reed 25 too? Wow, I thought he was going to be 24 here. I guess it makes sense, actually. 23 is a rookie. Um, but, you know, you have less time to develop them and quicker for the regression. You know, you need that that youth to be able to get the lower XP needed upgrades. Uh, and then defensively, uh, you know, Cam Smith or Kerry Smith is going to be at the right end starting spot because he has more of a need to get a dev up, whereas... You know, if Rutherford gets a dev up and makes him superstar, it's great, but normal dev is basically useless. So he really, we need all of our guys to get to at least star before we even worry about everyone getting a superstar. Uh, and I think Smith has a really good chance to get a breakout year one versus Rutherford trying to get to superstar on a breakout. And that's why we don't worry too much about getting normal dev with an ET, because Kerry Smith is already star dev. A little 5k bonus XP as well. All right, 65 mil. We're actually not as well off as I thought we would be, especially when you have to factor in that we have a bunch of offensive linemen to pay. Uh, but I think we are fine. Lucas Van Ness is going to be a pain, especially since I don't know what I'm going to do with him yet. But 65 mil, Quay Walker, five-year deal worth 65. I mean, in Madden, he's he's a goon. He's a problem. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, I mean, he's not top dollar, but a four-year 38, maybe a four-year 40 will do it. I think I'm down with that. And then Zach Tom... I think he's worth it. Another three-year deal here. 57. Seems to be pretty on par with the NFL contracts. We'll lose Walker. We'll lose... I think we'll lose Walker. He's 79 overall. He's actually better than I thought he would be. He is pretty good. What are the sacks allowed? Looking like six. So he's definitely on par for more than last year. I think you just find a new younger lineman. I always talk about trying to keep teams together. The only way to do it in Madden is really just letting linemen go. In real life, it's really hard to find those anchors, but... In Madden, it's not as hard. I actually almost didn't even do this breakout. I was like, what are the chances he gets four touchdowns or 200 yards? And then I saw the season he had last year, and I was like, you know what? 
actually pretty good. And he does get it. X-Factor Jacobs back again. And the Packers are dominating this division. Yeah, I was about to say, there's a chance at a bye week, and they get it. 12-5, and five, the number one seed in the NFC. Almost good enough for the AFC's number one seed as well. Oh, I wish I would have seen the Cowboys miss, bro. That would have been the icing on the cake for our chances, but... Cowboys are still here. Hopefully they're... What were they, like a fifth seed? Hopefully we don't have to play them the first freaking game uh, in the uh, divisional round anyways. Yeah, I'm a little surprised, though. I am genuinely surprised that we got the bye week. What do the Cowboys do? What the Cowboys doing? Middle of the season was kind of iffy for them. Uh, it does help when your division is just like a dumpster fire at this point, it seems. 9-8, 8-9, 7-9, or 7-10. Not the worst I've seen, but not the best. Jacobs was the number one in yards. Love, pretty good season again. Uh, you know, less interceptions. Jacobs, 1,858 yards, 15 touchdowns. If he does even 80% of what he's doing in this rebuild so far, well, that's a lot to ask for. But it would be amazing. Oh, I would feel freaking awesome about it. Dobbs, please go to star. We just signed you to a four-year 40. Uh, Jaden Reed, really good season again. Wicks, not bad. at Musgrave, never going to get a dev up in this scheme. But if we're winning Super Bowls, question mark, plural, uh, it's worth it. Gary, 12 and a half. Nice. Van Ness, four and a half. Terrible. And the rest, I don't care about. Jair with four interceptions. A couple for the other guys kicking. I put McLaughlin in, bro. Oh my God. Why is he not the guy? I don't even know, but we will look at the yearly awards. Jordan Love on the MVP list. He was number five, actually. I almost said he wasn't, but he was. Uh, nice. Rookie of the year awards. No. And no, uh, best quarterback, number two, so that's a Pro Bowl. Jacobs, best running back, who would have thought? Uh, best wide receiver at number eight. Best O-line at number four. And number nine and ten, not bad. D-line not on the list. Linebacker, number one, Rashawn Gary could be an X-factor. DB's not on the list. Oh, no, 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 seven for Jair. And then kicking, I mean, who would have thought? But uh, Anders was better. But, yeah, I'm going to be putting McLaughlin in right now. I, I put him as the starter. I don't know what to tell you. I put him as the number one. Maybe I actually didn't, and I, I put him at the kicker. He's definitely at the kicker turn, or uh, kickoff sender. Maybe I did forget to put him in. May, you know, some sometimes things happen, and this thing may have been that I forgot to do that, but anyone but the Cowboys, please not be the Cowboys week one. Yay, the Dallas Cowboys from, was it 19-0, is it? 20-0, actually, to 10-7. and Maybe they're human after all. Hopefully. Dallas can't handle the snow. Dallas cannot handle the snow. I don't care what anyone says. This is a Green Bay dub. This is a Green Bay dub. Great stop with a touchdown. Another stop with a touchdown. We scored more points in the first quarter of this game than we did all of the last championship round against them. 24-0! If we can beat them like this, this could be our year. And it's only year two, which is saying something. Oh, no. Yes! That's the GG. Let's be honest. We all thought the Cowboys were making the comeback. 42-28. to 28. The fact that I can get this excited early on in a divisional round proves how OP the Cowboys are. Your love wasn't great, but he also did not throw two interceptions. Uh, Benson. Oh, my Lord. Finally, Benson showing me something. Two touchdowns, 129 yards. Jacobs with 74. Puts the group at over 200 Love even had a rushing touchdown. We love to see that. All you need is love. Rashawn Gary with two and a half. Stewart with one. Van Ness with a half. Bullard and Alexander with picks. McLaughlin didn't miss a kick. And this could be our year. Giordano Love. I don't know why I said that. 88 overall. Don't know how balanced he is, but I'm going to go field general. This is the best way to balance someone. Deep accuracy is kind of his, like lacking, but he's pretty good across the board. That is a good quarterback. The championship round, who is it against? It is against the Niners. Oh, please at least tell me they had, like, a close game or something against someone. The Buccaneers. Okay, that's not that strong of a win. And that is kind of a strong win, but it's the Panthers. So kind of early. I don't know. Uh, DB's Bullard. Hopefully this is Bullard because we need to dev up for him bad. Yes. Win or lose, as long as Bullard gets this, this is big. Although I beating the Cowboys and the Niners, I mean, that's destiny for a Super Bowl. So... I would like that as well. I would like the breakout and the Super Bowl win. Why not? Do the Packers have the juice? Another stop with a touchdown to start it off like last game. Did not quite put up that 14-point lead, but here it is now, 14-0. 21-0. Green Bay has built a defense. 27-0 in the fourth quarter. 
A shot out against the Niners. 34 to 0. This is our year. I have the Packers offense on. I did change to the Steelers defense, but that didn't really change much. Purdy only had zero touchdowns, two interceptions, a 40% completion percentage rate. Love, really good touchdowns. Benson did not have the game he did last week. They definitely tried to have that, but didn't. Jacobs carried the load this time. Reed was pretty good. Dobbs was pretty good. Musgrave with a touchdown. Rashawn Gary with two sacks, one for Van Ness, Corleone, and Sweat with a half. Maybe it's Corleone, but Corleone or Corleone sounds so much cooler. McKinney and Wiggins, the two newest names of the DB spot. And we're in the Super Bowl with a very, very non-Mickey Mouse run. This is like the ultimate like difficulty run you could have. I mean, harder than anything on the AFC, to be honest. Like, yes, you have the Chiefs, but... The Niners and Cowboys, the Cowboys are like the ultimate team, and the Niners are really tough. On the other side, it's like Ravens Chiefs, maybe? But nah, I'd rather go against Ravens Chiefs any day in game than the Niners and the Cowboys. The Cowboys are like literally unbeatable. Is that a Green Bay Packers designer belt? What is that? Part of his jersey is like ripped off. What a year this has been. I am kind of excited for no reason at all. One to power move. Got ourselves a block shedder. And I don't know if Bullen, uh, Bullen? Bullard got any did dev up on top of it, though. What a year. It's like a Christmas year. This has been a hell of a rebuild so far. Like, this has been solid. Are we going against the Colts? Okay, I'm not going to get too excited. Because we beat two really good teams, so it would be very fitting for the team we actually lose to to be the Colts. Uh, and then what do we got? So there's the scheme, uh, you know, that didn't change anything on the, the whole scheme except for Pittsburgh, which like we've seen is not, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, who do the Colts be? So the Ravens by seven, the Chargers by seven and the Bengals by three. But yeah, we didn't really see many great numbers. Like Gary had 12 and a half, but he is easily capable of that. So it's not like anyone got elevated. We still kind of suck, but we're playing really well in the playoffs. Uh, no DevOps for Love, but Dobbs does get to 83 overall, which is amazing. Uh, and, yeah, he's pretty balanced. He's Like I said, he's like the poor man's Nico Collins now. Uh, anyone on offensive line? No. Jacob's already an X-Factor for his breakout. Defensively, I don't think anyone went up in Dev here either. So, pretty lackluster end-of-season DevOps, but... We did get a love. We did get a Dobbs over the last two seasons, so can't complain too much. But here it is. The 86 overall Colts versus the 85 Green Bay Packers. Here it is. 7-7, a really uh, high-scoring start. 14-7 now. 21-7 is looking like most of our other playoff games. 27-7, missed the extra point. 30-7 and a half. It's game. Green Bay has won a Super Bowl. With one of the younger teams in the league, I don't know if they would still have that title of the youngest, but they definitely helped by getting rid of guys like David Bakhtiari and Aaron Jones. Like, did they count David Bakhtiari when averaging the, well, average ages of Green Bay? Because for a guy that doesn't play, he is pretty damn old. <laughs> so, I mean, they definitely got even younger by getting rid of Jones and uh, David Bakhtiari. So maybe still the youngest team did add Stewart, I suppose. But regardless of the points... A Super Bowl in year two with the Green Bay Packers scheme. I have always kind of said that their scheme is kind of balanced. You usually get some pretty good rushing numbers. You get some decent wide receiver quarterback numbers. Good enough to get DevOps. Not like overwhelmingly great, but good enough. And we kind of seen that with that. So, you know, this is kind of a balanced playbook. Defense still, you're never going to get good numbers with a 3-4, unfortunately. But a Super Bowl in year two, and we're going to do another two seasons, I suppose. It's kind of hard to beat the Chiefs, but, you know, back-to-back -back is possible. Three-peat is possible. Realistically, with the Chiefs doing what they've done recently, you really shouldn't do more than, like, okay, we'll go for the back-to-back, -back, and if we don't get it, well, the Chiefs are better than us anyways. But Taylor killed it, but wasn't enough. Seemed like he had two really big long runs, but Jacobs was great. Benson, he had that really good run, and he's just been bad the other two games. Uh, Reed, very good numbers. Musgrave, not bad. Wicks up there. Uh, looking at sack totals. This defense, though, has limited sacks for the most part. This is the biggest sack game they've given up. Van Ness with two, though, is great. Pick for McKinney. And the Packers are Super Bowl winners. All right, 51 mil. And Van Ness, I think you're going to save more in the long run just waiting a year. But at the same time, if he doesn't take that next step, do you even want to keep him? 86 power move. I think he's good enough. Four and a half sacks after zero. I think we just... 
We just wait the longer game and uh, re-sign him long-term next season. McLaughlin didn't really get to see how good he was, but this is kind of what you're asking for anyway. So going to give him that 5 mil. 46 mil left over. Need a new left tackle. Need a new DT, kind of. But I think Rutherford is just going to step up. Uh, so really just an offensive lineman, which you could probably get in the draft. Uh, I like Rasheed Walker. It's just, I think for the money, for how much he's asking for, we could probably do better. Uh, cornerbacks could always use them, but they're not like... It's not like we must grab one. Also, it doesn't help that Rasheed Walker like didn't even want to come back. 15.6 mil without having any interest in us. That would cost us at least like almost 20 per, probably 18 per minimum. Uh, so that is that is also pretty costly in that sense. Lane Johnson's played right tackles like whole career here pretty much. Uh, not here, but you know what I mean. So making him a left tackle would be a little weird probably, but did just win a Super Bowl. Do you pay him the money? Put him at left tackle? I mean, he's a goon. I mean, he's kind of a goon, so do we not just try it? I mean, why not? DT we don't really need. and I mean, it's kind of just offensive alignment. So I'm going to grab Lane Johnson, maybe move Tom over to left tackle. Let Lane just cook where he cooks. But that also seems like it's probably another guy that retires an Eagle. Eagles have, like, just... They've built this, like, culture of, like, we want to be here until we retire type of situation. But that's pretty much it. We're going to go for... Uh, you know, Lane Johnson, he's still, you know, he's a free agent. What can I say? And he is now a Green Bay Packer. All right, we are in the draft. And honestly, I think I'm going to go with a pass rusher as I don't know if I like Lucas Van Ness for the long, long term. And there's a couple of pass rushers in there. I don't think I need DT just yet. We have a bit of youth. You know, we have a guy that's 23 in star. He hasn't started yet, so I do worry a little bit. But going to give him a chance before I just completely throw him to the, the wind you know, we did put a pretty big draft pick on him. Uh, and like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with Lucas Van Ness. And outside of, like, a lineman or two... Ooh, Clement was actually on my list. He went early. I have another guy named Gallery, but honestly, if he's gone, Hobbs is on my list, too. Maybe I won't go pass rusher. Maybe we don't have the uh, the facilities for that. Gallery's still there at 20. I do have a... What is it called? A third round, extra third round pick from the Panthers that I could use to make this move. Some decent DTs in fairness. Pass rushers, I don't really like Bennett too much. Uh, Baxter, he's not really the scheme fit. You know, 280. He's got athleticism probably, but he would have to play a 4-3 edge if anything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess we could move to a 4-3. You know, but then it would kind of like waste somebody because Sweat probably doesn't fit as a DT even though... He is an 81 power move guy. And I guess with my edge rusher gone, I tried to trade up. It took more than... It was going to take more than two third round picks with 32. So I'm going to wait. And uh, here we are at 32. Going to go Glenn Baxter. Hidden development trade. If we go to 4-3, we got ourselves a potential edge. I think Rutherford for right now, though, is kind of replaced. Uh, I'm going to go to 32. We had two linebackers, one that was a 2-3 to three and a one that was a 3-4. to four, So I think we're going to end up grabbing one of them, whoever's there right now. I also did have a tight end, didn't I? Where's my tight end? Did he go? No shot. I don't remember who it was. Crap. Maybe it was Harris. Was Harris 21 to... I think it was Harris. He has that poor Excel as well. I don't know if I want to go with him, though, because Musgrave, I can give him another chance, I think. It might be a little bit of a reach, but I'm going to go Saunders, six foot three, 21 years old. Pretty damn athletic. Welcome to the squad. Head in. Okay, not as athletic as I thought he was going to be. That left side did kind of hint to that, but not a bad pick at all. And then O-line was kind of all over the place. I'll probably go to 10 and then trade up. But I do want Harris now. I kind of want Harris now. Maybe I can trade off Stokes and like a fourth next. Trade in the future is all I do. Brooks and Cooper with a third this, a fourth next. And then I'm debating on if I want to still go for the tight end or not. Because I think this is going to be an offensive lineman to hopefully... Oh no, we don't need a lineman technically. Because we got Lane Johnson. This would be like a future-proofing lineman. Maybe I can just go with the tight end. Uh, I do like Pew though. Pew, pew. I'm going to go Bobby Pugh, and then I'm going to trade up for the tight end. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do it anyways. Oh, thank you. Usually when I second guess, it's a sell. I'm going to go trade with the Steelers right now, and if that Harris guy... I'm going to check the other guys, because maybe it wasn't Harris, but if that Harris guy is... Uh, what is it called? Oh, can I get both of these? If he is Hidden Dev, I think he starts over uh, Musgrave. 
Also, I don't think we need Rutherford anymore, so I don't know what this got me, but I, I made the trade. It is what it is. Here we are. Did we move up? Yeah, we moved up a little bit. We went up like eight spots or something like that. Uh, but this pick, I think, is going to be one of the tight ends. It could have been Manly. He looks pretty good, too, but he's not as fast. Was it Lawrence? 22 as well. 4, 6, 9. I think it was Harris because he was the fastest. And then I don't think any of these guys are going to be valuable, right? Derek Barnhart. He's actually not bad either. I don't know a whole lot about Harris, but I see a lot of A's and a B, and I think he was the fastest. So I'm going to go with Sheldon Harris. He's hidden. He's the starter. He is 100% the starter. And I don't know what to do here. We don't really need linemen, but at this point, we're so close with 23. Might as well keep future proof in the team a little bit. Oh, yeah, Preston was on my list, too. But we ended up going with that Baxter guy, I think his name was, a little bit earlier. So I don't think that's going to be a position we need. A lot of tight ends going, which makes sense because those guys actually did look pretty good. It, maybe the guy I just took wasn't even on my list. And we've seen one lineman go. There should still be at least another lineman here. Future proofing at its finest. Galleries there, too. I'm going to go Paul Banks. I think Paul Banks looks good. Please be hidden. No! I sold. Oh, no. We're going to have to remember those two guys. I want to see them. So who was it that we passed on? So Gallery and Frost. And there's only one quarterback left. Holy crap. And he's so bad. Yeah, I'd rather go with the fullback. I was going to... Ooh. I see you, Gibson. I don't see much, but I see a bunch of A's. Overall, 74, 74, 73, 74, 72. That lineman pisses me off. But we did land a hit in with every other player, so fair enough. Glenn Baxter, uh, 81 speed, 83 excel, pretty good power move. Block shed's not great, so you wouldn't expect to be an interior guy, but a 280, I'm going to allow him to like move around a little bit. Star Dev, I was really hoping he would have been higher than that. Saunders, I will say... Cedric Gray is not a bad player, so we actually could, if we wanted to, like right now, move to that 4-3. I just don't know what to do with Sweat, and I don't want to waste him. Star Dev, I was really hoping Saunders would be better than that, but what can you do? Star Dev is still better than normal, which Gray can't seem to get away from. And then Bobby Pugh probably would be our center, and we would just move our current center to like guard or tackle, because he is on the taller side. 6-3 uh, is not short, but you know what I mean. Uh, a little bit taller than that. And uh, the tight end, 74 overall. Probably not as good right now as Musgrave, but he is at least hidden. And I have seen a couple of these tight ends be superstars, so we'll see if that's the case or not. Put him at number, I guess, 89, and not for us. Don't know about those other tight ends, but I do want to see some of the players that we passed on. Uh, who was in the third round? So in the third round, we took Harris, then after went Manly, 71 overall. He was hidden, in fairness. Not as athletic, for sure. Our guy was, like, just on the cusp of being an elite athlete. Manly, star dev. What else do we have for devs? After Manly, Lawrence, I think, was on our list as, two, as well. 72 overall, also hidden dev. Why couldn't this have been, like, the, the X-Factor run that we seen that one time we passed on tight end? Like, remember all those X-Factors we seen in one draft and we missed on them? Well, of course, all of a sudden, we need a tight end here and they won't give it to us. Uh, but who the hell was Gallery one of the DTs? I think he might have been Mike Gallery, Hidden Dev, of course. Great finesse move. Probably only going to be Star, but I've seen some things. It is Star Dev. And then the other one was a lineman. I would not remember his name, would I? Banks. No, Frost. One pick after us. Okay, he was also normal. I was about to say, did we just pull a real-life Josh Myers over Creed Humphrey with the Chiefs? That would have been insane. But nope, they were both bots. Season 3, we've already won our Super Bowl in year 2, so really we're just getting greedy at this point, which, hey, I'm down. Uh, this is what the squad looks like. Offense, you know, the receivers, we could use more. We could use better, but they're good enough. we got a brand new tight end that could be like an 80 overall by the end of the year if he has a good year. Uh, Jacob's at X Factor definitely helps him last longer here as he's 28. Uh, and then obviously Jordan Love, 88 overall is great. O-line, we're going to need a new right tackle, but you argue that Cohen just moves to right tackle and Pugh goes to center, which, you know, once again, our line would be set. Defensively, we have nobody that is normal dev, so we're cooking there as well. I mean, this is a team that, like I said, just won the Super Bowl as an 85 overall. We're now an 87 overall. Why not repeat? Baxter, the rookie, gets his first uh, on the camp standout, which obviously is free power rush slash finesse move. 
and 10k XP. So we're five and five all of a sudden. Uh, Jair needs a contract. Lucas Van Ness. Hmm. Reed, Ellen Jenkins, Wicks. I think maybe you let Wicks go, and outside of that, you keep everyone else that you can afford, which I think is pretty much everyone at this point. We're uh, we're not in a bad spot contractually, uh, salary cap wise. So I think we'll be able to easily afford all these contracts when you're 25. Man, that's a lot of money though. I'll probably do a two-year 50. All right, headed to playoffs. We must win. And we are in 10 and 7. The Dallas Cowboys get to play at home this time. 88 overall. I don't know how we're only 10 and 7. Just won the Super Bowl, went 12 and 5. Felt like we improved the team. No, we had higher potential players, and Lane Johnson was a direct one to one massive overall upgrade. Josh Jacobs, the number one running back in the league again. Back to back years, three straight years in the top three for yards. He has been absolutely a great move, without a doubt. Let's take a look at these numbers anyways, though. Jordan Love, those yards keep dropping, but the touch-on-to-pick ratio stays the same. Uh, and then Jacobs, even better year this year. MVP caliber year. Uh, Dobbs, not bad. Reed a little bit on the lower side. Wicks on the lower side. And then Harris, talked about the tight ends, aren't going to get numbers at this scheme. Really good blocking, though. Who? Somebody gave up zero. Who was it? Ellen Jenkins. That might be his superstar year. Gary with 10 sacks. Nine for Smith. Six and a half for Baxter. I'm glad I paid a five-year 60 for Van Ness with three sacks. And then McKinney, eight interceptions. That's got to be X-Factor. Three block kicks for McLaughlin. But, man, McKinney and Jacobs, specifically this year for McKinney, the moves are like elite moves. Jalen Hurts wins MVP. Uh, as far as the other awards go, we win nothing. Should, yeah, number three for a quarterback, number one for running back, wide receiver, not on the list, O-line, number one, Allen Jenkins is a superstar, D-line, not on the list, linebacker, number one for Gary, a little surprised by that, DB, obviously McKinney, and then uh, kicker, obviously not on the list, but a couple of dev-ups guaranteed, this team is kind of cooking, and we still have a chance, not a clean season, really bad start specifically, but we're in the playoffs, and that's all that counts, here it is, end of the game, Start of fire. The Cowboys really good. A lot better than the last game we had. 14 to 0. Oof. 21 to 0. 21 to 7. That halftime seemed to take so long, too. And it's not a good so long as we're losing by a lot. Down by 14. Down by 7. That touchdown might put it away. Down by 7 with 6 minutes left. The defense makes a stop. We have a chance, and they do get the stop. And we're going backwards. Third and seven. First and ten. Moving on the field, running out of time here, though. I mean, this clock is draining at an insane rate right now. All right, coming in the game, we got Reed. I really wish it was not Harris on that inside streak. And we have, like, literally no one open. Perfect coverage. Play if you actually get the time is really solid. So I'm going to double team the right end. See if we can get that time. And we do get the time. Romeo! All the way to the 11 with two timeouts to go, to remain, to go. We don't have the best route runners. We definitely don't have the best guys to get off the line with the release. We're going to try anyways. Dobbs. Romeo! Touchdown! And it's the Cowboys. I don't think you leave this up to chance. I do not believe you leave this up to chance. I would prefer to go, like, inside zone with the league's apparently best running back. Josh Jacobs. Two yards. There's nobody on the line. And he's denied! I didn't sprint one bit and the line still gave up. Maybe I should have sprinted. How does this happen? How? Oh, the left guard, the center protected the right guard spot instead of helping there. And then I didn't sprint at all. Ellen Jenkins is like giving up the lane for some reason and we don't get it. You could say I sold, but I think every team in the league goes for it there. I can't, I'm never going to run up the middle ever again. I swear it always look. What a kick, McLaughlin. What a kick. I swear it always looks good and then you hike it and somehow 45 block sheds happen. One hell of a comeback, but I just didn't want to leave it up to chances. I mean, if we didn't make the last couple of plays there, we would have run out of time and lost anyways. Looking at the numbers, Jordan Love did throw an interception, which was basically the difference in that one. Romeo, Dobbs, and Lamb cooked up. Sack totals uh, kind of even... Marty Mapu, is it? No, it's Marty. What, what is his name? Because like somebody got like so offended by it that one time. Instead of Marty Mapu, it's Marte Mapu, and I mean I, 
I apparently had like sinned beyond belief with the difference in pronunciations. Because as we know, he is uh, one of the league's best. But anyway, he's going to the Super Bowl. Probably going to be the Cowboys. I mean, if we're not sitting in their way, no one is. No one is. Except for the Rams. The Rams are. Let's see the dev ups if we add any. I'm trying to think. Uh, definitely a lot on defense. Offense, sadly, not a singular one. Oh, yeah, Ellen Jenkins. Defensively, though. Wait, did we not get any? Oh, no, we did. We got Gary and McKinney. Uh, was there anyone else we were hoping for? I don't think so. But uh, McKinney is now a 91 overall. So, once again, these uh, these signings, absolutely worth it, apparently. And then, of course, Gary is now an X-Factor, which is pretty clutch. He's like 29, I think 30 now, actually. Which we love to see. 93 overall. He'll be here for this next final season minimum and then some. Uh, but, yeah, still looks pretty good. About to be 29. So, pretty good player. And, uh... I don't think we're going to go all out. I think we're going to build, keep building the team like we have and you know, really future-proof this team, even if we're not going to be here for the next seasons. You know, Just keep it a realistic style as we see the results of the Colts versus Rams and the Colts win it. So back-to-back -back Super Bowl uh, trips, finally winning it, though. And did Lane Johnson retire? He didn't, apparently. I'm a little surprised by that. He's 37 now. Maybe we re-sign him. I don't know. Maybe the, the money's right. Or we find someone even stronger in free agency. I'm not sure, but let's find out now in a second. We have about 60 mil, it says. And I don't think there's anyone crazy we have to pay. I think we have to pay Wiggins. I guess that's like 15, 20 mil. Uh, fifth year option. I don't think it's worth it. Where is Lane? Lane Johnson's still really good. It's a lot of money, but I'm down if he's down. There you go, 37 mil left over, and our entire team, for the most part, other than Wicks, I guess the special teamers too, but I don't really care too much, basically all intact, so we're kind of cooking. And we could keep Wicks if we wanted to, but he's had some pretty average seasons. Obviously, he's playing the number three spot. There's not really many, uh, many catches and targets to go around. 37 mil, Tyreek Hill is cool, Chris Jones is cool, but... Realistically, we're not going to spend any money here. Like I said, I want to try to finish this thing out as realistically as possible. Lane Johnson being signed to our team was the most unrealistic thing we did, and that's something that could easily happen. Pick 21, we should easily have a pick that can grab whatever we need, which realistically is kind of running back, kind of safety, because McKinney and Jacobs both on a one-year deal, and especially Jacobs uh, definitely needing to be replaced soon-ish. But I think the best fit, I do like Johnny Grant, but I think Edge, Gary needs a contract too, but at his age, we should easily be able to do a three or four and he'd be fine to be like a 78, 70, like, or not 78, 87, 88 by the time that contract's up anyways. So I think I'm going to go safety and I really don't know who I like the most. I think McGee looks the best. Curtis is pretty good, too, though. I'm probably going to go with whoever the youngest is with the best, like, 40 and all that. So, uh, obviously, 22 there. Looks good, but not going to be our guy. Buchanan, 21 with decent speed. And then Curtis, the final guy with the lowest of the zone, kind of looks the best. But I guess Buchanan's my guy, 21 years old, going for the youth. Hit an Ev, potential future starter at safety. And if not, he's a great backup anyways. And then we could go Owens, the DT. We also have uh, Durbin, who looks amazing as a linebacker. Seems a little high. There's a lot of really good linebackers. I'm going to go to 10 and then take whoever's remaining at linebacker. And then O-line. I don't know much about these guys. Winslow looks pretty good, but he's a 2-3, to three, and I don't really need a lineman that bad. So I think I'm going to trade down to like 10 in the third round and, like I said, take the best remaining linebacker. I assume some of them will be gone by then. 68... 56. I mean, I don't really want to like manually trade at this rate, so I'm going to go with this. Get a fourth next year to move back like 20 spots. I usually do those types of moves, not even 20 spots, less than that, to move up. So it's about fair that we you do that to move down for once, give them a fair uh, shake. So Durbin looks really good. That's going to be my guy. 22 years old. He's whatever, you know, he looks good. Him, Dev, you know, what can you do? You can't deny us of the gods. Try to fourth round next year to move up 10 spots up the Titans, which is going to be the center Brown, as Michael Cole was uh, one of my uh, linemen. I had Michael Cole and Brown, so with uh, him being gone, obviously I'm going to take my remaining guy. Earl Brown, 21 years old. Another hidden. We cooked. 
we did well, and we actually have six round picked. I know we don't have a fourth, fifth, or whatever, but sixth and seventh rounds, it's it's an improvement for us. It's something. And we're going to go with a kicker, Arnold Jowers. Only other kicker with even close to elite kick power was good. And, yeah, it's these 23-year-olds that are hidden dev. High hip uh, kick power with pretty decent accuracy, and they're 23. They're always 23. That's, like, the one stipulation. I don't even know if we went for a punter or not, but why not just go with a brand-new rookie special team set? We have another elite kick power guy, but look at how bad the rest are. So bad, but... David Harper looks to be uh, pretty good as well. Elite kick power, C accuracy, and I thought with that 23 years of age, we're going to have two hiddens, but we only get one. But I think that's a really good draft class. Didn't really get anyone we needed, but future-proof in a team that's in a pretty good spot. Maybe we could have went wide receiver, but outside of that, there's really not much we could have done. I think the team is as good as it's going to get right now. Durpin, Durbin, I don't really like the name. It just throws me off so much. Uh, is a really high overall. And then Buchanan looks to be like a great starter down the line. Uh, maybe McKinney sticks around for another couple of years. And by the time McKinney's gone, Buchanan's the guy. And he's a superstar as well. So, yeah, we're in a really good spot. This is one of our best depth rebuilds in general. Great block shed, iffy coverage, terrible press. What's this like? As I was to say, is he like a pass rusher? What's going on here? But, uh, yeah, he's not a pass rusher. You're never going to find someone this good late uh, for pass rush anyways star dev middle linebacker number three and then center I don't really care if he's center kicker whatever just you know you're a backup right now anyway so just sit there all right uh Joshua Gray to the Bengals for Lindsay a fourth and a seventh in the future I'm kind of down and here is the squad for the final year 94 overall Jacobs 90 Jordan Love 85 uh Romeo Dobbs 86 Jaden Reed 79 Harris like we kind of expected uh, and then the offensive line is, you know, basically an 85 across the board. If you take some of the higher overalls and drop them down and add them to the lower overalls. Defensively, you know, Walker's great. Gary's great. McKinney's great. The corners are amazing. It's a good team. It's it's not the best team we've ever built, but it's definitely a good one. And it's one of the best depth teams we've ever built. 99 mil. Got to pay Wiggins. Got to pay Gary. Got to pay McKinney. I'm actually kind of down with, like, most of these contracts if not all of them, even Benson, potentially. Uh, maybe not Sweat, though. Sweat, I think, goes, and then we just switch to a 4-3. Not that it really is relevant to us, but that would be the plan. Switch to a 4-3 in the future. Don't know if we can afford everyone, but we're going to try to do it. Seven-year 105 for Nate Wiggins. Gary is pretty much just going to be getting what he's asking for. Really? It's going to be like a sliver. McKinney, man, I really should move on from him. I'll do a two-year if he wants to. Two-year 37, up the years, and I'm back. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with these things. I think uh, I'm not really down. 23 mil left, and that's not even counting Bullard. I think maybe McKinney is gone. I mean, a four-year deal. I mean, keeping a guy on the team for four years, it's a lot of years, right? McKinney is really good, though. And then Trey Benson, I'd like to have him back. Two-year 14, I might have to let him go. Well, it kind of makes that draft pick not wasteful because he's a high third and, you know, he actually is really good. But, uh, yeah, never actually became a starter for us. And I think Jacobs could easily play another two seasons with his current overall, even when he regresses. So, yeah, nine mil left. Losing some players, I will say, I think he got to get rid of McKinney, actually. Maybe a one year at best, but I don't think he's going to take it. I offered him a three year 90 and he says, I would like to play for a new team next year. Oh, it's because the money went up. Even then... It's 30 mil per. Like, just take it, dude. We got some wins. 15 and 2. The division is ours. The freaking conference belongs to us as well. And I did not change the scheme because, I mean, we won a Super Bowl. We made the playoffs last year. And we're cooking. We are looking good. Didn't need to change anything in the wide receiver spot. Josh Jacobs, the number one yards guy again. Jordan Love might have won MVP with a 33 to 3 touch on a pick ratio. Jacobs. Eight yards short of 2K with 19 touchdowns. Dobbs might go to superstar, should go to superstar. Reed was pretty good. Smith was okay. And then Harris, you know, tight end in this game. It's just not going to happen. O-line, uh, decent once again. Uh, who's, wait, did the center this time have zero? Cohen might go to superstar. That's kind of crazy. Gary with 11 and a half sacks. Smith with eight and a half. Baxter, four and a half. And Van Ness. Three sacks as an 85 overall with 90 power move. I love this game so much. It's so good. 
Kicker wasn't great, but he is a lower overall in fairness. Uh, picks pretty low. Punting, 51.9. That's pretty good. Kick return, punt return game. Punt returns two touchdowns for Benson. Impressive. Really? A 33 touchdown, a three interception season is seventh in the league. I got to see what these numbers look like because that's absurd. Offensive player of the year, no shocker there. Rookie awards, no. Best quarterback at number two. Best running back at number one. Wide receiver at number three. O-line, Tim Cohen's a superstar. Uh, best linebacker at number three and six. Best DB, not on the list. Best kicker, not on the list. But I got to see these quarterbacks. 33-3 to is seventh for MVP. What are these numbers, bro? Literally half the league, even... Okay, oh, yeah, I thought it was freaking Daniel Jones. I don't know why I said... Uh, it said Daniels, and I thought Daniel Jones. 45-5, to 38-4, to 43-7, to 31-7, to 20 freaking 8 to 4, 27 to 7, 36 to 3, 24 to 4, 28 to 8. What are these numbers, dude? These numbers are going insane. I I don't know. It's like it'd be the greatest season in NFL history at quarterback, but sure, I guess. The Niners, we're 91 overall, they're in 88. We are the better team. We beat them as the worst team, so if the math is mathing, the math is mathing. That's all I can really say. We should win. Going to the end of the game. 3-0. to zero. 10 to 0 Pretty good start. Halftime of 17-0. to zero. This is a lot quicker than... Oh, 17-3, actually. A lot quicker than that Cowboys game where we were losing. It felt like it took forever. But we're up by 11. The Niners still have a chance here. Offense just has to do enough, and they do. 24-16. Victor over the Niners sends us right to the championship round because of the bye week. Nothing really elite from Love, but his completion percentage was good. Jacobs was great. Benson had a touchdown. Nothing crazy going on at wide receiver. Defensively, two sacks for Bosa, one and a half for Young, one for Gary, one for Smith, half for Thornton. And kicking, their guy got blocked, which might have played a factor. To the championship round, it's the Cowboys, of course. Oh, I'm clicking this. Give me that playoff blizzard. Last time we beat them... Pretty nicely, it was because of the snow. Give us the snow. Home game with the snow game. We are about that life. Can we win two out of three? Be pretty impressive. 91 overall to their 85. They're actually kind of on the downgrade. Look at that snow. That is the snow I miss. Here in Wisconsin this year, it was pretty mid. The winter... Not a whole lot of snow, let me tell you. One of the lowest snow counts we've had in so long. There was a lot of times where it, like, rained because it was just warm enough. Good old global warming. What do they call it? Climate change now? I can't keep up with all the buzzwords. But right now, not looking too great. Get the touchdown with the two-point. They get a touchdown, though. We're down by 10, and that is probably going to be it for this rebuild. I mean, barring some sort of crazy miracle, which will not happen. The Cowboys, too goaded. Way to go, EA. You have created uh, the perfect video game. For people that have nails driven deep into their skulls. Uh, two touchdowns for Jacobs. Jacobs was so good in this rebuild. He was actually insane. Uh, they had all the sacks. We had none. Jair with a pick. And Green Bay loses another championship round. Ah, man. The Cowboys, they are just a fun team to play against, aren't they? Don't you guys just enjoy doing rebuilds and seeing the Cowboys always win? Because EA's just got Jerry Jones' big old flappy Adelac on their mind. I don't know. He seems like a guy that would drive a Cadillac to the Super Bowl. It is the Jaguars versus the Cowboys. We'll see who wins. We got a Super Bowl. We got a couple of championship round, you know, trips, but even with two bye weeks, but no multiple Super Bowls, unfortunately. Year two should have just ended it, but uh, the Cowboys win by a lot. Who would have actually thought? I would have never guessed it. DevOps, none for Jordan Love, which is kind of crazy, but it's, it is a, like, how are you doing compared to the rest of the league situation? Dobbs, he's just good enough, right? He's just good enough. 87 overall. Never became one of the elite receivers in the league, but he's definitely an above-average guy. Jaden Reed is now an 88 overall. Never got to that elite status either, and his release sucks, but good enough, right? Above-average, solid player. Jacobs, I don't know if he regressed yet, but 93 overall. He's him. That's the regression, Jacobs, at 93. That is a good contract that we signed him to then. Still versatile and has 95 Excel with 91 speed. Look at Jordan Love now. The 93 overall quarterback with Superstar. 89 deep. 
a 94 medium and a 95 short with a 94 throw power. Didn't go up any higher. Uh, break sack's pretty low, but who cares? Play action, probably a little bit better than that because Green Bay always has a very lethal play action game. Under pressure and awareness are great. Throwing the run's great. Can't really ask for much more than that. Uh, Smith, or not Smith, uh, Harris, Sheldon Harris, 83 overall. He's definitely got more potential. He's still really young, so obviously a lot still left there. O-line, I guess we'll look at Zach Tom. I'm kind of curious anyways. 86 overall, really good pass blocker. That's what Green Bay has, and then the run blocking's a little lackluster. But hey, didn't hold back freaking uh, Jacobs. Uh, we also got two offensive linemen in the same rebuild. <laughs> Another, hey, he fits right in, although his regular run block's really good. Oh, no, he doesn't fit right in. He's just a good finesse blocker. Never mind. But uh, two superstar from star dev linemen in the same rebuild. That's, I mean, that's not half bad. Uh, Thomas an 87 overall, so why not take a look at Ronnie Thomas as well? Another finesse guy. It seems like they always kind of lean towards finesse. 89 overall for Elton Jenkins, who is also a superstar, like we said. A little bit more balance than the rest, but still mainly pass block. Then I believe we move on to the defense, which features... Saunders, who is, I mean, he's getting there. He's an 80 overall. Uh, great block shed, decent zone coverage. He started off with really bad zone coverage, didn't he? Or maybe I'm thinking of Durbin. I don't even know. But let's take a look at Quay, who never got past star. He usually is an X factor by the end of a rebuild, but only an 88 overall, but still really good. That's that's obviously solid. It's a great block shed zone coverage combo in the league. Top probably 10. Gary, uh, he is in 92 overall. That power move is now 93 still the same excel and speed so still very elite worth it worth that contract we gave him bullard the guy that got to star dev during the playoffs 82 zone viable player i think it was a good draft pick in the end uh, and then mckinney 92 overall i kind of ended the talks with him kind of curious to see what would happen with like a tag i'd say the tag would actually be pretty fair for both sides so Maybe actually even tag him. Jair's still a 98 overall. I know he's not old, but 31, and he's still just super, super elite. Hopefully he gets back to that way in real life, as obviously some injuries and just inconsistencies. And then Nate Wiggins, what a duo that would be. He got to 83 zone coverage, 97, man. Got a speed upgrade. I think he even got an Excel upgrade. That is a duo. That is a goon duo. Uh, Kerry Smith, 86 overall, needs a contract, but you could do a fifth-year option this year. 86 block shed, kind of a poor man's Kenny Clark, which I don't know if that's really a good thing. Uh, then we have Baxter, who's already in 86 and still has another year on contract or two, technically. 96 power move, yet didn't really see crazy numbers. Love that. And then Sweat, never developed. The nose tackles usually don't, but 88 block shed, uh, 81 power move. That's not bad. Is it just because his awareness is low? He's still a really good player, so can't really hate that. But that's going to be it for this realistic style rebuild of the Green Bay Packers. Let me know what you think we did well, what we could have done better. I actually think this, I don't know if it's just because of my knowledge of the team, but I think this is one of our best like realistic rebuilds where I don't go crazy on signing or drafting players that just don't make sense, right? Like I ended up going with, I actually already forgot. What the hell did we go with? We went corner in the first round. Nose tackle high, which I think, you know, someone on the defensive line makes sense. Then we went with, who the hell did we? Was it a late safety in the late second? Or we traded down to the high third, got a safety and a running back. I still think Green Bay absolutely needs some sort of running back in the third or the fourth. Did a little bit for the O-line. Green Bay likes their third to fifth round linemen, mainly past the third. So I think this is a pretty good realistic draft and rebuild. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Pierre Plays for non of content. Gotta finish Spider Man, dude. What are you doing? Of course, this is probably the worst week to try and do second channel stuff because it's a pretty busy week with all these different players going all over the place. But with that being said, let me know in the comment section below as well what team you'd like to see next. Obviously, there's a couple of teams on the mind, like maybe the Giants, maybe the. Uh, I guess the Steelers, maybe the Falcons, maybe the Eagles. There's a bunch of different teams. I may already be in the process of rebuilding a team by the time this comes out. So even if there's a lot of people that are all like, do this team, and it's like overwhelmingly one team, you might still see something else. But anyways, that's it. I would imagine, I think, Bison's franchise would have came out earlier today. But uh, if not, it'll come out later today. And to make it up, no matter what, we'll do week one on Wednesday, even if the light goal isn't hit on today's preseason video, because 
let's just be honest. I was supposed to upload it yesterday, and I was like, I'm going to save it for the next day. It's a bit late. It's a bit late. My dentist appointment was a little bit later, and I wanted to get the free agency reactions up first. And I was like, by the time I upload the Bison, it's going to be like freaking 9 o'clock or later. And I don't know. I It is what it is. But you should see it today at some point if you haven't already. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.